Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another new to video It's Thanos Mustache here and today gonna show you guys the Invincible X build So basically this build right here was designed to be extremely tanky and still have massive DPS and life steal So without further talking, let's jump straight into the build So first of all, this is a new game plus build So if you didn't make your way to new game plus yet, you will not be able to make this build like that so now let me explain to you guys how the build works. Whenever you take damage, the damage you take is going to be reduced by a lot, all thanks to the sheer amount of damage reduction that we have versus all sorts of things. And in order to recover your HP, all you have to do is use the strong attacks. As you can see right here in our shooting doges club, we have this special effect called gain Amrita on strong attack. And whenever we gain Amrita, we can activate the life recovery on Amrita absorption perk from the chest piece. And this life recovery on Amrita Absorption actually stacks with the special bonus from the Toyotomi Clan Allegiance. So whenever you use a strong attack, you're gonna be recovering 3 times 68 HP per strong attack. So just for, to give you an example, if you pair that with the life drain on melee attack that we have on the weapon, you're gonna be recovering ab over 500 HP per high stance strong attack on the X. So that's a lot of life recovery. So now, in order to increase our damage, we have melee damage versus poison enemies. As you can see right here, we have these rolls on both of our charms. So that's already 49.8% more melee damage versus poison enemies. And we have Yatsu no Kami Core on our Guardian, which is another 17% melee damage versus poison enemies, which is a total of 66.8% more damage versus poison enemies. And in order to poison the enemies, we use poison shurikens, or we can use the poison special effect on some of the access skills to make it easier. Now, we will only be poisoning bosses because the damage output is already really high, so you will not have any trouble against regular mobs or yokais. Now, let's take a look at the equipment that you're gonna need for this build, and the stat rolls that you're gonna need as well. So, for the primary weapon, we're gonna be using the Shoot and Doges Club, which is absolutely mandatory for this build because of the gain Amrita on Strong Attack perk. Now for the stats that you're gonna need, you're gonna be looking for attack bonus on either Stamina, Courage or Strength A+, you need Life Drain on either Melee Attack, High Attack or Strong Attack, Melee Key Damage which is really good versus bosses and yokais, and Final Blow Damage. Now if you manage to get a 5th row via Inheritance, you can use a High Attack Break or a Strong Attack Break to complement the weapon. Now you also want to remodel the weapon to increase the scaling on stamina. So as you can see right here, we're using the remodeling type one, as you can see in the bottom right corner of the weapon screen. This is very important because this increases the damage of the weapon by a lot. Now for the secondary weapon, we're gonna be using the urn splitter hatchets and we're only using those because of the bolt and the burrish set effect. As you can see right here, we're getting plus 246 life and minus 10% damage taken on mid attack, which is extremely important for trading hits with the opponents. Now for the primary ranged weapon, we're gonna be using the Warrior of the West bow, and that's also just because of the set effect, which gives us plus 164 life. Now for the secondary ranged weapon, we're gonna be using Master Archer's bow for the set effect as well, that increases our bow damage by 20%. Now for the armor pieces, we're gonna be using 4 pieces of the Tatenashi set and 1 piece of the Onishibata set. Now, it doesn't matter where do you want to equip the Onishibata piece, you only need to equip one piece in any slot. Now, for the Tatenashi set, we're getting minus 15% projectile damage taken, minus 6% damage taken, damage bonus on equipment weight A, which is about 41 additional damage, and minus 20% elemental damage taken. Now, for the stat rolls on the helmet, we need elemental damage taken on guarding, enemy sensor, which is extremely helpful, but if you have that somewhere else, you may use life, uh, backstab damage taken and projectile damage taken. Now for the chest piece we need life recovery on Amrita absorption, elemental damage taken, projectile damage taken and backstab damage taken. For the gloves we need faster winded recovery, attack, tenacity and projectile damage taken. For the waist guard we need life, projectile damage taken, key recovery bonus on Amrita gauge and running speed. Now for the Greaves we need Running Speed, Projectile Damage Taken, Dodge Key Consumption and Damage Taken Over Time Fire. Now for the Charms, you're gonna need one Yazakani Magatama, which reduces the set effect requirements by one and I know that it's extremely rare and if you don't have that yet, I'm gonna give you guys an option to make a similar build without it. And for the secondary one, you're gonna need either the Shoot and Doge's Gourd or the Tokushiro's Gourd. 
Now the Tokushiro's Gourd is going to be a little bit better because if you go into critical health, you're going to receive a passive health recovery. And if you use the Shoot and Doge's Gourd, you're going to get Pleiades on Amrita Absorption, which means that your Amrita bar is going to fill up faster and you're going to get the key recovery bonus from Amrita Gorge faster, which is really good for the build. Now for the stat rolls for both charms, you're gonna be looking for Elemental Damage Taken, Ailment Affliction Duration, Backstab Damage Taken, and Melee Damage versus Poison Enemies. Now that's going to be the same for both charms. Now if you don't have the Yazakani Magatama yet, don't worry because all you have to do to have a similar build is exchange the Onishibata piece here for another Tatenashi piece, so you can actually have 5 pieces of the Tatenashi set and you're gonna change the arm splitter hatchets for the sword from the wire of the west set so you can actually keep the set effect as well and then you can use another secondary ranged weapon of your preference it doesn't matter now another thing that i forgot to mention is that you want damage bonus familiarity a on your primary ranged weapon at all costs because that actually carries to your primary melee weapon so just bear that in mind so now let me show you guys the guardian spirits that we're using for this build right here so for the primary Guardian Spirit, we're going to be using Gambo, which is hands down the best Guardian Spirit for damage reduction. As you can see right here, we have minus 5% damage taken and minus 15% elemental damage taken. On top of that, we have Anima Bonus on ranged hit, Star Ward on Mew Magic, which makes you unstaggerable while casting on Mew, which is going to be helpful because we're going to use about 2 spells on this build, and Anima Charge on Strong Attacks plus 5%, which is absolutely wonderful because we're going to use a lot of Strong Attacks. Now for the secondary Guardian Spirit, we're going to be using Inno Sazao, which gives us minus 7.5% damage taken on mid attack, which is perfect for trading hits against mobs. Now for the Soul Cores, we're going to use Yatsu no Kami, which gives us plus 17% melee damage versus poison enemies and plus 4% anima charge. Now bear in mind that this is one of the best, if not the best, yokai ability in terms of damage. Now for the secondary one, we're gonna be using Oriyoki, which gives us Anima Bonus on Damage Taken B, which is perfect because you're gonna be taking a lot of damage, and minus 10% Damage Taken mid attack, which is absolutely perfect for trading hits against mobs. Now for the last one, you can actually use any of your preference. I just like using Nureona because it allows us to paralyze enemies and it gives us poison resistance and melee damage versus unscattered enemies, which is not bad at all. So now let me show you guys the core stats that you're gonna need for this build right here. So as you can see right here, this build only requires level 115 in order to be ready to go. And just to prove that all of the fight clips that I've put in this video are made at level 115. At this level, you're gonna be powerful enough to go through NG Plus without any trouble at all. Now for the levels, you're gonna need 22 Courage in order to unlock all of the Guardian Spirit's abilities, you're gonna need 90 Stamina in order to reach 70% Encumbrance and reach B in Agility, which is extremely important, and also your main weapon scales a lot from Stamina, so that's a must-have. And you're gonna need 15 Strength in order to be able to use the Onishibata chest piece or any other piece in order to unlock its bonuses, and last but not least, you're gonna need 9 magic in order to unlock the stats from the Yasakani Magatama. And that's all of the stats that you really need in order to start using the build. Now, after level 115, you wanna focus on maxing out your stamina first because it gives you a lot of damage, and then you wanna max out your courage because it gives you both uh, damage and key recovery speed, which is extremely important for the axe. And after that, you can either go for full strength to maximize your damage, or you can go for constitution to increase your survivability, so it's all up to you. So now let me show you guys all the important skills that you have in this build right here. So let's start first from the Axe skill tree. So the first skill we want to get here is the Adamantin, which is a must have for this build right here. So this is basically your personal buff that increases your defense and makes you unstaggerable at the cost of movement speed. By the way, the movement speed cost is not a big deal because we have minus 49.8% status affliction duration rolled on our charms, so it only lasts for half the duration of the buff itself. And as long as you're unstaggerable, you can keep attacking the enemies and healing yourself in the process. Now for the second skill you're gonna need is Mad Spinner 2, which is really good in terms of DPS and is extremely helpful in dealing with crowds. And for the last skill we're gonna use Heaven and Earth, which is very good for quick bursts of damage. 
And for the Mystic Award, we're gonna be using Intensity that massively boosts the damage of attacks that reduce your key to zero or below. And after that, you're gonna unlock all of the passives, starting from Cornered Bore 3, which reduces damage you take by 30% when your health drops to 30% or lower. So now let's check the samurai skills that we're gonna need. So first you wanna unlock all of the running water skills, which are a must have for any build in this game, and then you wanna unlock Flux and Flux 2. After that you're gonna need damage boost stamina, which increases the damage of your active skill based on your stamina stat, which is going to be your highest stat in this build. After that you're gonna unlock all of the passives you can, starting from Fortitude, which increases your life. So now let's check the Shifting skill tree. So the first skills you're gonna unlock are the Yokai Within 3, which reduces the penalty to your key recovery speed while in the Yokai Realm by 30%, and the Dark Within 3, which reduces the penalty to your key recovery speed while in the Dark Realm by 30%. As you guys know, X uses a lot of stamina, so those are a must-have, and they are going to be very helpful early on. And right after that, you're gonna unlock Arcana of Serpents, which imbues certain active skills with the poison element. So that's what you're gonna use when you run out of poison shurikens, so you can steal poison enemies and get that melee damage buff. And after that, you can just unlock the passives that you want. Some good passives for this build are Curative Course 3, Special Finesse Recuperate 3, and Hasting Awakening 3. So now let's check the ninjutsu skill tree. So the first thing you want to lock here is Poison Shuriken 3, which is going to make it easy to poison enemies. It usually takes one or two shurikens at maximum to poison any enemy on NG+. And then we want to go for Ninja 2 Mastery 2, which increases your ninjutsu capacity by 5, because we're not investing any points into dexterity. After that we want to go for Power Peel 3, which is going to increase your attack power. And for the Mystic Award we're going to use Enlightenment, which allows you to perform a ninjutsu on yourself faster and extends the duration of its beneficial effects. And after that you're going to focus on unlocking the passives. Some great passives for this build are Paralytic Control 2, Poison Control 2, Snake Bite Technique and Endurance. So now let's check the Onmyo Magic skill tree. So the first thing you want to unlock here is Barrier Talismans, which increase your key recovery speed and allows you to dispel Yokai Realm Pool simply by touching them. After that you want to go for Incantation Mastery 2, which increases your Onmyo Magic capacity by 5. This is going to be important because we're not investing points into magic, only enough to equip Yazakani Magatama. After that you want to go for Extraction Talismans, which are going to give you Amrita whenever you hit the enemy with a melee attack. That's going to be extremely useful for boss fights, since this is going to double the amount of life recovery you get whenever you hit the enemy with a strong attack. And you're gonna see the clips in the end of this video, this is extremely overpowered in this build, you cannot die with that on. And after that you wanna go for Protection Talismans, which neutralizes a set amount of damage which is going to be very helpful if you need to rebuff yourself in the middle of the fight. And for the Mystical Ward we're using Awakening, which allows us to use Onmyo Magic faster. And then after that you can focus on unlocking all of the passives. Some great passives are Evil War 2, which reduces damage you take from Yokai by 2%, Lightning Break 2, Water Break 2, and Fire Break 2. So now let's take a look at the list of all the special effects we have in this build. So here I'm gonna read only the most important special effects. As you can see right here we have plus 66.8% melee damage versus poison enemies, which is absolutely insane. We have minus 34.9% elemental damage taken while guarding, minus 27.5% damage taken mid attack, minus 2% damage taken versus yokai, minus 77.2% elemental damage taken. We take almost no damage from elements. We have minus 36.5% projectile damage taken, minus 30% damage taken while below 30% health, minus 49.6% backstab damage taken minus 15.9% damage taken over time with fire, and minus 11% damage taken overall. And now for life recovery, as you can see right here, we have 68 life recovery on Amrita Absorption. Now bear in mind that this is the sum of both your chest piece stat and Toyotomi's Clan Allegiance bonus, so make sure you change to Toyotomi's Clan Allegiance in order to get more of your life recovery on Amrita Absorption. So now let's take a look on how to customize your X skills. So in this video you're gonna basically only use high stance, so what you're gonna have in your hold attack is Mad Spinner customized with damage boost to stamina, so you're gonna deal maximum damage with this skill, dealing quickly with crowds of enemies. 
And here, at the end of your combo, we're gonna get Heaven and Earth, customized with Arcana of Serpents. So whenever you run out of Poison Shurikens, you can use this skill to poison your enemies and get that extra melee damage buff. And for your self buff, you're gonna use the Adamant in here, so you can actually have uh, increased defense and immunity to stagger for the duration of the buff. So now let me show you guys how to ready all your Jutsu you're gonna need for this build. So for Ninjutsu, we're gonna ready 5 Poison Shurikens, which is going to be enough for most boss fights on NG+, and then we're gonna ready 2 Power Pills. Now for Onmyo Magic, we're gonna ready 2 Barrier Talismans, 1 Protection Talisman, and 2 Extraction Talismans. So that's pretty much it for the build, guys. Now I'm gonna show you guys a small demonstration versus some bosses on NG+, at level 115, so you can see the true power of this build right here. So thank you for watching, guys, and now, check this out!
So that's pretty much it guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video please don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe for more Neo 2 videos like that. So thank you for watching guys and until the next episode, see you!